God bless you. Thank you for joining me for week four of Dreaming Together in 2020. I hope that you have had a wonderful start to your week and that the Lord has just been pouring out his blessings upon your life. I want to thank you once again for joining me on this journey. And uh, I appreciate everyone that has liked and subscribed to my channel. You have liked my posts and you've been sharing it with other people. Thank you so much. I just want to be a vessel in the hands of the Lord to be able to encourage you and bring a word to your life that is just going to transform your life. And so God has been so great and he's been doing so many great things in my life, in the life of my husband and the church and just all together, we're so grateful for what God has been doing. This weekend, we just dedicated our new parking lot at our church, and we are so happy and so excited of what God is going to do in the next couple of weeks, in the next couple of months. We're just at the expectancy of what God is going to do. We're believing that God is going to send new families that are going to be saved, that are going to be able to come and worship with us. And we're just anxious to see what the Lord is going to do this coming weekend as well. We're going to start a revival at church and we're excited about that as well. We want to see the move of God and the move of the Holy Spirit among us. And it's just going to be an awesome time. So if you're in the Corpus Christi area, we invite you to join us at Templo Elim 2625 Galahar. And it's going to be a powerful time. We're going to have Pastor Choco de Jesus with us. And it is going to be a great time in the Lord. So that was just extra, extra information and promotion. But what I want to focus on today is um, I want to continue talking about dreaming together and just um, seeing those dreams that God has placed in us be fulfilled. But what I want to talk about is that sometimes our dreams are delayed. And you know, what happened this weekend with the parking lot at our church, we waited for two and a half years to get this parking lot done. Um, for whatever reason, you know, we were just on a, a waiting time. Um, there was things that just weren't going in the direction that we desired. But in the end, this past weekend, when we were able to dedicate this parking lot, we realized something that a lot of times we want for things to happen quickly. We want it to happen in our time, but God has a perfect time. You know, and some people are not willing to wait to see their dreams fulfilled. They want things to happen quickly. They want things to happen yesterday, you know, and it is so, so difficult um, to wait. But at the same time, when we realize that we're in God's perfect timing, that timing is just so much better. We think if only God would answer me now, things would be great. But when God decides to answer, it's perfect. It couldn't be better. And so there may be dreams that God has given you that you've been praying about maybe two and a half years like we did. Or you've been praying more maybe 10 years, maybe five years, maybe, I don't know how long. But I want to encourage you today for you not to give up. During the time of waiting, God can do great things. And so I want to touch on just a couple of points that I got from the book that I'm reading. So when we have a delayed dream, we're in a waiting game. And in the book of Acts, we see the disciples in the first two chapters, 
we see that they are waiting. Jesus told them before he ascended to heaven that they needed to wait for the promised Holy Spirit. Can you put yourself for a moment in the feet of the disciples? They had walked with Jesus for three and a half years. They had seen him do miracles. They had seen him do so many things. He was their comforter, their counselor here on earth. They depended on him. They learned from him. And then all of a sudden, he dies upon a cross. They're devastated, even though he had told them that on the third day he would rise again. They were just so confused. They didn't understand what was going on. They felt that they had been um, left all alone. And they didn't understand what was going on. When Jesus comes back to life, they don't believe it. And he's on earth with them for some time. And then he tells them, I have to leave. And they see him ascend to heaven and they, t and, and they hear that he says that they need to wait for the Holy Spirit. And they are waiting for 10 days. The Bible says in the book of Acts that they were waiting, but they were all in one accord. They didn't know what to expect. They were probably confused, but they waited. They waited for 10 days. They prayed, I'm sure they sang. They were gathered together in one accord, waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came down upon them, the Bible says that tongues of fire were uh, given to each person, those 120 individuals that were gathered in the upper room that day. And the Bible says that they received power because that's what Jesus had told them. And you will receive power. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, Acts 2.8. And they were now equipped to be able to spread the gospel. Now the Comforter was with them. They had received the power. They had spoken in tongues. They had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so now they were equipped, they were given the power to be able to speak boldly in the name of Jesus. But they waited. They didn't understand what was happening during that time of waiting, but they waited for a moment for those 10 days. I don't know how long you've waited, if it's 10 days or if it's years, but I want to encourage you that you need to wait and just believe God for great things during the time of your waiting. During that time of waiting, there's going to be things that are going to come to distract you. The enemy wants to come and distract you from that God-given dream. And I want to tell you something. Dreamers stay focused on their dreams and they don't set their hearts on temporary things that only become a distraction. We cannot move our eyes away from Jesus. He has given us the dream that we are believing him for. And trust me, there's going to be times where we're going to be so distracted, wanting to give up, and we just want to... Uh, just forget about the dream and we focus so much on other things that you know want to keep us away from believing that God is going to give us that dream but I want to tell you don't get distracted don't get distracted with those things the next thing is that there's going to be voices of doubt that come to you people are going to tell you, you've waited too long. 
It's been already two and a half years. Are you sure? It's been 10 days. Are you sure? It's been 20 years. Are you sure that God is going to answer you? Are you sure that you're going to see your dream fulfilled? We have to be firm in our belief and not let distractions or voices of doubt come and hinder us from seeing our dreams fulfilled. This reminds me of Noah. God told Noah to build an ark. Can you put yourself in his place for a moment as well? In the time when it didn't rain upon the earth, when God would water the grass with the dew each day, they didn't know what rain was. And he's telling the people, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, it's going to rain. And he took so much time to build that ark. And then once he built it, maybe he was like, well, how am I going to get all these animals to come into this ark? But he was obedient. He didn't let all of those voices of the people around him come and tell him, hey, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you building this ark? It doesn't rain around here. What is that? He didn't let those voices of doubt take over. He was obedient to God. And the third thing is that we are tempted in our time of waiting. We're tempted to take shortcuts. Sometimes it's easy to take a shortcut. When we're driving, we want to get there faster. We're late. We take a shortcut. But when we're talking about our dreams, that God-given dream, we can't afford to take a shortcut because sooner or later, we're going to pay the consequences. We cannot help God to fulfill our dream. God is all-powerful. And he directs our path. But sometimes we want to do things our own way. And this reminds me of Abraham in the Old Testament and how God promised him that he would be the father of nations. And God told him that he was going to have a son. And he did have a son, but his wife decided to help God. And they both agreed that they were going to help God. And so Sarah gives Abraham her servant and says, here, I can't have children, but here's my servant. Go ahead, have a child with her. And Abraham didn't think twice about that one. That's another story. But God told him, okay, Ishmael is going to be a, a powerful man and he is going to also, you know, be the leader of many nations, but he is not the promised son. And in their old age, Sarah and Abraham had their son Isaac. If he would have only waited for the right time today, we still live in a time where the consequences of that shortcut still affect our world today. And all because Abraham and Sarah decided to take a shortcut. Did they get their dream? Oh yeah, they did. With a lot of problems after that. We don't want to suffer negative consequences to us trying to get ahead and doing things our way. We can't afford to do that. Jesus waited until he was 30 years old to start his ministry. He was the son of God. At a young age, he knew that he was no ordinary child. He was no ordinary teenager. He was no ordinary man. 
but he waited for the right time to be able to do what God had called him to do. We cannot afford to take a shortcut to get our dream fulfilled. And so I just want to tell you four more things that uh, we need to take into consideration. There are four commitments of a dreamer. Four commitments of a dreamer. Number one, wait for the power. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the direction of the Holy Spirit. Wait for the power of the Holy Spirit and be obedient every step of the way to see your dream fulfilled. Number two, remember the voice of God. God is going to lead the way in the process, in the time of waiting, magnify his name and worship him. Give him praise and give him thanks for what he's going to do. Number three, refuse to believe what you see. You know, it could have been so easy for us as a church, as the pastors, to be discouraged and be like, well, when are we going to be able to do this parking lot? There's so many obstacles that are keeping us from seeing this dream fulfilled. And we were seeing that there was obstacles. But if we keep our focus on those obstacles, it's going to be so bad for us because that means that we're distracted with those things and we have to keep our eyes on God. We have to refuse to believe what we see. Let us look and see. I see it completed. I see it completed. I see my dream fulfilled. I see this that I've been praying about answered in the name of Jesus. And the last thing, lock in and refuse to quit. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep dreaming. Don't quit. Don't get impatient because you will see your dream fulfilled. I am continuing to pray for you. I'm continuing to believe with you because we serve a great and mighty God and God will answer in his perfect time. Don't be discouraged. Continue to seek the Lord. Praise him for what he has done up to now and praise him because of what he is going to do. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Subscribe to my channel. Like this video. Share it with someone that needs to hear this word. And I know that it's going to be a blessing to their life. Let's continue to believe God for great and mighty things. And let's continue to dream together in this year. God bless you.